and welcome to another ATN tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over the system settings in your Binox 4K. So to get started, um, you're going to press the, the center button, the OK button, for about two seconds to get to the system carousel menu. And then you're going to go click left to get to the wrench icon. So from there, you're going to click OK again. Now you're going to see four tabs in front of you, uh, night vision, photo, video, display, and settings. So let's go over to the night vision tab. And the first, um, the first settings we're going to see is, is light sensitivity. So there are two options for light sensitivity, low or high. On the low setting, you will get 30 frames per second. And on the high setting, you will get 15 frames per second. Your selection will depend on the amount of ambient light needed for optimal performance. Now, next one is uh, illuminator brightness. Uh, this sets the brightness on the IR illuminator that is built in into the, to the Binox. So you can go from one all the way to five, depending on the brightness needed. So now on to the next tab, which is photo video. You're going to see the first one is microphone. This is the option you, where you can turn on or off your microphone. Now for video quality, this can be set to 120 frames per second, um, 60 frames per second, and 30 frames per second. The ATN Binox 4K is capable of recording in day mode at 120 frames per second. This feature allows for, for post-production editing uh, for slow motion purposes. Please do Please note that the 120 frames per second mode is available in daytime setting only and does not improve your image quality. It should only be used if you plan on doing post-production video editing. When you choose to use this option, the incorporation of your widgets are absent. Widgets would include timestamp and logo that are added during the video processing. Next one is format SD card. Uh, this basically just formats uh, your SD card, removing all the data, pictures, or video. Okay, so the next tab we're going to go over is the display. And first thing you're going to see is screen brightness. Uh, screen brightness gives you a 1 to 5 numerical selection, with 1 being the dimmest and 5 the brightest. It is recommended that you use the brightest setting during the day for optimal performance. Next one is uh, display widgets. Uh, you have the option of extended and minimal. The difference is um, if you put it to minimal on your viewfinder, you're, you're not gonna be able to see the, uh, the cant and the tilt or the electronic compass or the range finding. Well, I can show you that right now. So if we choose minimal and then we're gonna go back to the viewfinder So there um, you won't see the electronic compass up top and left and right the tilt and cam. So we're going to go back into the system settings. Wrench icon. Display. And we're going to go back to display widgets and put it on extended. This is the default option actually. So when you press choose it and then go back. There you go, uh, electronic compass and your tilt and can. So what's next? Okay, next is sleep mode. Uh, if you turn this on, uh, your, your Binox will go into hibernation mode depending on the time you set it. So uh, for, for power saving, um, if you turn it on, for example, like for 20 minutes uh, and you won't be touching the Binox for that period of time, it'll go into hibernation mode. The screen will go black. Uh, and then once you pick it up, it'll come back on and you can start using the, the Binox as normal. Okay, next one is uh, LRF preview. Um, basically, if it's off, I'm going to show you how, how it looks like on, in the viewfinder. We're going to go back. And because this has a um, laser rangefinder, 
to activate the laser rangefinder, you're gonna be pressing the power button just with one click. If you see here, it shows you the, the arrows in, in the little box of where it's where you need to point for to range the distance. Well, here actually, I'm in an office, so um, in your upper left side where it says um, in, infinite um, it's, is because um, the distance I'm measuring is actually less than five meters, so it won't show up, but um, I'm using this just as an example. So yeah, we're ranging with the button and it comes up with these arrows and uh, that's where you're gonna be pointing towards your target to range it. Now, we're gonna go back into the, the system settings, the display, and LRF preview. So the function was off. You have three options, off, on, and temporary. So if you hit uh, LRF preview on, it will always show up with a box of where you need to range before you range it. So the box in the center, you just um, you know locate your target, and then when you press the power button to range, you will know exactly where you're where you need to range. I guess so. That could be helpful for some. Now, temporary option is the same thing, but it'll, the box will show up just before uh, you press the press the range button. So you're gonna need to press it twice. And I guess I'll, I'll demonstrate that as well. I'm going to settings, display, LRF preview, and we're going to switch it to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, temporary. So once you set it temporary and you go back into the viewfinder, um, box will be gone. But when you press the power button once to range, it'll come up with the square first so that you can locate your target, put it in the center, and then you're going to press the power button once more to get that laser range laser range finder to measure your distance. Okay. So let's go back into the system settings, display, and ranging reticle. This allows you to turn on the um, smart build up reticle. So if we turn it on, press OK, and go back to the viewfinder you will see our smart mill dot reticle show up on your binox so you can do the calculations um, using mills if you wish. And back to the settings. Now, um, ranging reticle interval distance, you can change change the, the interval distance between the mill dots. And obviously ranging reticle units, you can change them from mill to mod. And that's it. Also, well, the next one is uh, language, if you need to change that. The last tab we're going to cover is the settings tab uh, here, in where it says units. You can change the units of measurement from standard to metric system. Date and time, you can change the orientation of date, um, depending on how you want it to be displayed in the viewfinder. Now, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Here, uh, the first one you'll see is remote controller. With that, you can connect and pair the extract remote control for controlling the Binox 4K. Remote control orientation. You can change the wheel from front to back, depending on the preference you have for the remote's orientation. Rangefinder mode. You can change it from standard to fog mode. Wi-Fi info. Uh, here where it says SSID, uh, mine is Binox 4K CDB7. That's going to be the name of the of the Binox 4K that you will see on your smartphone when you're going to be connecting it through Wi-Fi. And the password is ATN Smart HD. Now for broadcast LRF, this is a feature that you can use if um, paired with our um, other smart devices. It uses our BICS technology, which is um, Ballistic Information information Exchange. Uh, for example, if you have three, three people in your party and one has a Binox 4K with this feature on, and then you have two other people, for example, with a Excite 4K and Thor 4, uh, when you range um, with your Binox range finder, it will instantly transfer the range data to both of those scopes simultaneously if they have the, if that feature turned on and it will instantly change their point of impact on their crosshairs. 
Now onto device type. Well, you can't really change that. That's the only device uh, for this firmware. Zoom, uh, you can choose zoom from standard or extended. Uh, extended zoom is an electronic zoom of 10 power to your optical zoom. Now factory restore settings, it just basically restores all your settings to default. And uh, firmware version is where you can see the firmware version for your particular um, device. And uh, the last one is device serial number. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.